Okay. So Kelly, as we worked to put the OER DEIA guide together for educators to use, I know that you were very passionate about having an introduction in place that made sure that educators had key pieces of information that would help them to feel confident in their implementation of OER using that guide. Do you wanna to talk to me a little bit about the information that you felt needed to be in there and why you felt it needed to be in there? Absolutely. Um, you know, when I first discovered OER as a means for reaching my goals around diversity, inclusion, equity, and access, I was so amazed at the way my students responded that I found myself thinking, what's kept me from this before. So I actually entered into this introduction with the idea of what would I have needed to know in order to get there faster and more, more comfortably. And for me, one of the biggest pieces as a teacher was understanding copyright. I think I had always sort of hidden under the safety of fair use as I was picking and choosing for my curriculum. So I realized that including an understanding of what copyright really is, how to find licenses that are open and what that open licensure means would be a great way for teachers, schools, districts to just leap in without fear. Yes, I can use these resources in these ways and then I can reshare them with confidence. So that was really my first intention you know, as we think about using OER to lower barriers, we have to lower those barriers for ourselves as well. So legality in the law seems like a big barrier, but understanding licenses really reduces that barrier. Um, the other thing that I realized had, had kept me from fully leaping into OER use in this way was understanding OER's unique power to be transformed by teachers and by students themselves. I had heard about them and thought about them mostly as like free, you know, that was the, the first lure, but it took a little while and seeing some examples to understand that I had the power with OER as a teacher to adapt OER for my students that were right in front of me each year and that I could even turn that power over to my students and have them transform the OER. So I wanted to make sure in the introduction that we had some examples that help teachers see what they could do with OER in terms of their DEIA goals and other educational goals, and then also what their students might be able to do as well. And I love the examples that you included in the way that you specifically called out the power of OER, not just to enhance your own repository of materials that you have and the access that you have to give students as many pieces of information as possible, but in order to give them the ability to see themselves reflected in those materials, and then in turn to give them the power to take control of their learning too in different ways. Um, I, I just think that that approach really helps teachers to see what can be done. Mm -hmm. with OER and how it can positively impact students. So not only are we talking about what we can do to positively impact teachers, but at the end of the day, when we make a positive impact on our teachers, we also want to make sure that that translates into a positive impact for our students mm -hmm. as well, because it's all about them, right? It is what all about them. For that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for your contributions to the guide and for all of your hard work. We really appreciate it. And thank you for taking the time to sit with me today. Thank you. It's so good to see you again. You're welcome.